we're going to walk through how to use Airtable and Zapier together to set up some automation for inquiries that you might receive. This could be either for sales or customer support, any type of inquiry. As you can see, we have a basic Airtable form here. Again, this is just dummy data. And then we also have our basic uh, data here in a grid format as well. We're going to walk through in the next few steps how to use Airtable and Paths in Zapier to automate some of these inquiries for you. We're here in Zapier and as you can see, I've built out this Zap that uses Airtable as our trigger and then we've used the help of the Path by Zapier to help run this into two different breakdowns so that that way we can run this and set up a path for qualified leads and one for unqualified leads. This means that we can use that form where we're collecting information to then root and respond to folks that may not be qualified or send messages in different places. So let's walk through how we did this. So to set up the Zap, we're of course just going to come in and find a new Zap, find Airtable and then go ahead and create new record and hit continue. From here, you'll connect your account. With your account connected, you'll need to come in and select the appropriate base, table, and a limit to view if one is applicable. Again, keep in mind if you're using your Airtable base to have multiple views, be sure that you have one specifically set up for Zapier so that you can capture that information here. Once you have everything set up, just go ahead and hit continue and test your trigger. Be sure that you do have record data in there. Again, we've, we've put in a few examples just so we have data to run this tutorial. We'll hit continue and our next step will be to add path. Keep in mind that path can only be added after a trigger step and at the end of a zap. So if you're not seeing path, that's probably the issue that you have. From here, we can go ahead and set up our different steps. So we'll just go ahead and hit edit and you'll give this path whatever name you would like it to have. So in our case, we've called this qualified leads. We're gonna set up one for qualified leads and one for unqualified leads. From there, you'll continue to build this out like you would another Zap. You can see that each has rules. So we've used our qualifier questions here to set up our rules. So we've set however we would like them to be. For this example, we've used qualifier question two matches option three and qualifier question one uh, matches yes. As you can see, you can add ands or ors. Once you have that set, go ahead and hit continue to test your data. You can close that out. And once you have those rules set, now you can continue to build out this app as you would any other normal app. So you can add in multiple steps and perform multiple actions. The first thing we've done is connected with Slack and then gone ahead and just set up a message to a channel. So this would be an internal Slack. Perhaps you're using this for qualifying leads or clients. Maybe it's customer support. You can set up so that this data, if certain criteria are met in your form, route to different places. So this will send us a team message in Slack with all the information we wanted here. And then we've also set it up to send uh, an email and you can use email by Zapier here. And in this action, we've gone ahead and we're gonna send it to the person who emailed us, getting back to them. So as you can see, we very quickly automated this simple form response into two different actions going different places without us ever having to touch it. So now the team is aware and the person who emailed us is aware that we're looking into whatever it is that we've sent. Once you have this app set up how you would like it, just be sure that you're testing everything and just go ahead and move on to the next one. You can do that either by hitting the home button here or the drop down to get to your next path. You'll proceed the same way. This we've named unqualified and we've set up our rules accordingly. So again, these would be different questions that people have asked responded to. This could also be used to tag things and to segment certain populations of folks responding to you. So again, if this is for customer support, if they've picked maybe a web app or mobile app, or you're using hidden fields within Airtable to capture that information, you can pull all of that data in here as long as it's living in your Airtable base. So you really can use this to automate a lot of your process depending on what types of inquiries you're receiving. Once you've set up all of these rules, go ahead and hit continue. Again, once that's done, just go ahead and add in as many steps as you would like. 
for our case, we've decided to update an Airtable record. So we've pulled the record that's coming in and we're going to update it to unqualified email, meaning they received an unqualified email as true. And then we're going to send an outbound email again, as we did similarly previous in the previous example. We're going to send this to the person responding, let them know that we did receive it and why we won't be following up. This removes anything that you have to do from a team or solo perspective. You've automated that response based on your form and the information that they've sent in. This is a great use case for qualifying questions and to set up how to automate inquiries without you having to do uh, touch points with every email. Once you have everything done and you've tested everything, you can go ahead and hit close and then turn your app on. You can continue to add additional paths if you would like to. Again, you can use the same form to add paths for qualified and qualified to uh, target or market or segment out the people that are responding to this particular form. Be sure to use qualifying fields in your form to help when setting up this segmentation using paths in Zapier. Thank mm -hmm. you.